I knew from the beginning, since he took the decision to go to Israel and make peace with Israel, I knew that my husband would be killed. He was the first leader, the Arab leader, to make peace with Israel. And it was such a very difficult time for people to absorb what he is saying. But he believed in peace as a mission that he has to do it. All over Beirut, clouds of black smoke rose from piles of burning tires and piles of refuse set alight by the Palestinians and the Lebanese leftists in protest against the visit to Israel of President Sadat. But my husband believed that he wants to bring up the new generation in a peaceful atmosphere. Since my husband went to Israel, every time, every day, every minute, he goes out of the house for meeting, for something, uh, I always believe that he'll not come back, that he will be killed. We received many threats telling him that they will kill him. He knew it, I knew it, but we didn't talk about it because we didn't want to discourage each other. I remember he was saying, while we are walking, you know, Jihan, I feel that I have done my duty. I think I am going to meet God while I'm happy. I was watching the parade for 6th of October. That day, I told him to put on the bullet vest, which he refused. He said, no, 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 no. If the bullet comes to my head, am I going to put something on my head? He never cared for his safety. Then as the parade was reaching its climax, with most people's attention distracted by an aerobatic display, two grenades exploded. When it happened, my bodyguard pushed me because the bullets were coming in the window. And I said, what are you doing? He said, this is my duty, madam. And really, he saved me. When the bullet stops and the fire stops, I rushed to the window again to see what happened. I haven't seen him. The assassins managed to cut down at least 10 people, some of whom were killed. President Sadat was rushed straight to a helicopter which took him to the Mahdi military hospital. I went directly to the hospital. Nobody told me anything, and the hospital was crowded with people. The chief of doctors was there, and I told him, why are you here? Why are you not with my husband? He looked at me and he said, I can't, I can't bear what I, I can't, I can't. I knew what happened when he said, I can't. I knew it will come, but when it came, it was such a big shock to lose not only my beloved husband, whom I loved all my life, but he was my partner. It was something very hard to face life and to face the world after that. 